everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And what do you think would happen if we were to dip dye two skeins of yarn at the same time that had very different fiber contents? Today we are going to dip dye Knit Picks Paragon, which is a sport weight 50% merino, 25% alpaca, 25% silk yarn, and Swish Worsted, which is 100% superwash merino wool, into some Wilton's Black food coloring at the same time. This video is inspired by a viewer who submitted the results from a similar experiment. And she was curious what had happened and why she got very different results on the two skeins of yarn. So I thought that I would take a look at this in video form so that way I could chat about why we might see different results on different fiber types that are going into one pot at the same time. I know from experience, from a lot of experience with superwash yarns, that they absorb the food coloring based acid dyes really, really quickly. From my limited experience with alpaca and silk blends, and I have never dyed a yarn that is both alpaca and silk in it at the same time. But from my limited experience, I know that it required a lot more time, heat, and acid for all of the colors to bind. So I'm expecting that we will have a lot more color on the Swish yarn versus the Paragon. But as to what the hues are on those yarns, that's what we'll have to wait and see to find out. I am pre-soaking these yarns in plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. There are 12 cups of water in my dye pot and I am going to add 3 tablespoons of white vinegar, approximately, and start heating this up. Frequently I do these dip dyeing with 8 cups of water and I'll start between one and two tablespoons of vinegar. So using three tablespoons of vinegar in 12 cups of water is the same concentration as using two tablespoons of vinegar in eight. I know that with the Wilton's Black, we will probably need to add more acid in the end for all of the dye to absorb to the yarn, because some of those final blues can be stubborn at times. However, I have not dyed two different fiber types like this at the same time before, so we'll have to see what happens. The Wilton's Black I am going to use today has the red number 40 in it. Filming of this video is actually derailed because I discovered that I had recently purchased two different formulations of Wilton's Black and I had no idea because I thought that the only ones available now were this red 40 version. So. This is just a little friendly reminder to double check your ingredients when you are buying especially the black food coloring. I am going to mix a half teaspoon of this black food coloring into half a cup of water, approximately. Um, when I am I'm dip dyeing with the black, my preferred concentration is to use a quarter teaspoon of the food coloring per 100 grams of yarn, and so that's why I decided on this proportion. And so, once our dye bath is boiling, we will add this and start dip dyeing our yarn. Okay, we are at a low simmer. Our dye is mixed up, so let's add our Wilton's Black to the pot. And we're gonna start dip dyeing. Okay, I have both skeins of yarn, and we're gonna just start at the same time. So, can you tell right now that one has a lot more color in it than the other? Whew! Overall, shade-wise, they are looking, they're not looking that different. When I go in now, we're seeing, I'm seeing more blue, but I don't think, oh goodness, where is my, <laughs> yeah, there's, there might still be some reds in here, so I'm not ready to add that last little bit, 
but I can put a little more. Ah, da, 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 da. It's heavy. <laughs> there is still definitely a lot of color in here. And what's funny is with this amount, the it's looking really, really dark. Almost, I mean, I know that things tend to end up looking purpley, but it's looking pretty dark on my superwash wool. There's still so much dye left in here that maybe it is almost time to add it. Okay, that's how we know. We've got the blue at the end. Now I feel good adding that last bit in there. So the, the one thing that has surprised me right now is that um, I am, I definitely saw more color go into one of the yarns than the other, and I'm going to reduce the, the heat a bit, but overall it seemed like the, the overall hues were very, very similar on both of these. So I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and see if we think we need to add some more, some more vinegar, but right now... Uh, the color that is left is very, very blue. It has been 10 minutes, and there is a very, very clear difference between these two yarns. There's no question about that. Um, but uh, the, the colors that I'm seeing on the Paragon are not atypical from what I might have expected. Um, so there is still some blue here, but it is starting starting to clear. What's interesting is that more of the blue seems to be around sort of the Paragon. Um, I am, I think I am going to go ahead and add a little more vinegar. Um, having the colors set completely tends to help when we're washing. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more tablespoons of vinegar. And yeah, I am very, very intrigued. This sort of, I don't want to agitate things too much, but just mixing it up a bit. And I'll come back in another 10 minutes and we'll take, ooh, pretty. We'll take a closer look at these yarns. 10 minutes after we added the additional vinegar and our water is clear. We can see a range of hues in this pot right now. Um, I am very, very curious to see what these yarns look like. However, I have now turned off the heat and I am going to let things cool off for a while in the pot before I remove them. Sometimes if you have a little bit of color that isn't binding and for whatever reason you don't want to add more acid, letting the yarn cool in your dye pot can help that last little bit of color absorb. Um, but in this case, it looks like we have everything there. I'm just choosing to leave it in the pot for a little while longer, but I will come back when we're ready to remove it and wash the yarn. It's been a couple hours. The pot is still slightly warm, but you can see I can comfortably reach in. And our water is completely clear. I'm wringing out some of the excess water so that way things can cool off a little bit faster. Let me... But without even sort of laying out these yarns separately, we can right away see a huge difference in the way that these yarns absorb the color. Um, and we even have something that is more black than I think that I've gotten so far. Um, so I am going to let these cool and then we will wash them. It is hard to believe that these came out of the same dye pot, isn't it? <laughs> the colors and the level of saturation are rather different. I mean, ultimately, yes, maybe our super washable is a much, much darker version of the other one. But given how dark this color is here, it looks vastly, vastly different. But all of that color 
is in the yarn. I'm going to add a tiny bit of clear dish soap to help dislodge any excess dye. But now I am not seeing anything come out. So once, you know, and I'll rinse a couple times to remove the soap, and then we will hang up the yarns to dry. At which point I will come back and talk about some conclusions from this dyeing experiment. Here are the finished dry yarns. Can you believe that we dyed these all in one pot? We have a worsted weight, 100% superwash merino yarn. And then we have a 50% fine merino, 25% mulberry silk, and 25% baby alpaca yarn. Now, I know from past experiments that alpaca and silk blends absorb color slower than their wool counterparts. But this experiment demonstrates that and sort of shouts it from the rooftops. The depth of color saturation between these two yarns is staggering. Ultimately, the tones of the two yarns are fairly similar. Both of them have purple to blue gradients, even though the tiny bit of blue on the Paragon is a little hard to read on camera. I think that the Paragon yarn absorbed the dye at an overall slower rate, whether it was the reds or even the blues, than the superwash wool above. And I think that we would have been able to get a bigger depth of color in the Paragon yarn if the Swish superwash yarn wasn't in the pot altogether. It just would have taken a lot more time. Now, looking at the Swish yarn on top, I love this colorway. This is one of my favorite broken black colors ever. And I think that what makes this so spectacular is that overall it has less red in it than a standard broken black colorway might have. We would still see the, a really deep purple, but sometimes you see this sort of shimmer of red over it, which I'm really not feeling. It's more of a cooler toned yarn overall. So I really can't say if the, you know, if the bottom yarn has more red versus blue in terms of what it absorbed at what rates, but overall we have two stunning colorways of yarn that are vastly different from one pot because different blends of fiber absorb food coloring and probably other acid dyes as well at different rates. Thank you, Lily, for suggesting this dyeing experiment. I am really curious and excited to dip dye more different types of yarn into one dye pot to see what kind of differences we see. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I love to explore different ways to apply color to yarn, and you really don't want to miss a video. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patrons of Chemnitz get some really, really fantastic perks, including early access to one new dyeing video every month, exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Goodbye, everyone.